I had to take a chainsaw to get the trees removed from the driveway just so I could get out and actually help my neighbor. Hello, everyone. My name is Lee Ngo, and welcome to Educative Sessions, a podcast series with people in the developer world about their coding experiences. This is powered by Educative, which makes it easy for authors to provide interactive and adaptive courses for software developers. My guest today is Greg Edwards, who is the CEO of Crypto Stopper. And today we're going to talk about how this cryptocurrency entrepreneur survived a land hurricane. Uh, Greg, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Lee. Yeah, so Greg, um, you know, let's uh, start at the very beginning of this incredible circumstance you found yourself in, uh, you know, and certainly talking about like the work you're doing as well. So tell us about who uh, you are with respect to your company, Crypto Stopper, and then where were you specifically when, where the, the term is derecho officially, right? Uh, the land hurricane, the derecho. Correct. Uh, Correct. When that derecho struck and changed your life. Yeah, so um, I'm the CEO of a company called Crypto Stopper, and we've created a tool to stop ransomware after it's already running on the network. And I started that because the previous company that I owned was an offsite backup and disaster recovery company. I was seeing companies getting hit by ransomware starting way back in 2012. So that's where the, the Crypto Stopper side came in. And the derecho, uh, we were, we'd actually moved in we're all, everyone in the company was working from home because of the pandemic. So I was home. Um, I knew that there were thunderstorms coming that particular day. This was August 10th of 2020. And I knew that there were thunderstorms coming, but nothing severe. And so I thought, okay, I wanted to take, I live on a small farm in the middle of Iowa um, and wanted to take my dogs out for a walk before the rain started. So I was on my property up at the top of a hill and looking out to the west and I see this wall cloud coming and start running for the house. I was probably a few hundred yards from the house, so a little ways and had to round the dogs up to get inside. Um, and just as I get inside, the wind and the rain just start pounding the house. And um, I went in the basement. I mean, typically, I'm I'm the guy out out by the window videotaping the tornado as it's coming in. Uh, right. <laughs> in this right. case, I was I was hiding in the basement. I mean, that's how it sounded like a freight train just oh, wow. coming through the house. Uh, so, I mean, I I was in the basement for a good. It lasted about forty five minutes. Wow. Uh, and so, it, yeah, I mean, that's how it started. And once, um, once it was over and I came outside, I mean, I, the pictures of the damage and the, the picture behind me, I mean, just streets with trees completely down and having a, a disaster recovery background, I knew that this was going to be, I had no idea at that point how devastating it was, but I knew there were going to be, going to be issues. Wow. Wow. And let's get into those a few a bit more. So as you were just so like the actual hurricane was about 45 minutes and already that's quite a terif terrifying thing. But oftentimes when natural disasters hits, it's really not just the disaster itself, but the days, if not weeks of aftermath of the residual damage that happens. So um, so what were your first instincts, right? Especially with someone with so much domain experience in how to recover from these kinds of circumstances. Uh, and I want to hear, especially, not only are you taking care of you and, you know, your household, you're also thinking about your company as well. So how did you, uh, what were your first instincts in trying to keep all of those things afloat and, and active? Yeah, so definitely the first instinct was making sure my family was okay. Right. Um, and you couldn't even, so I couldn't even get out of my driveway. And there were, I had to take a chainsaw to get the trees removed from the driveway just so I could get out and actually help my neighbor wow. also so that they could get out. So that was the first thing. And then, I mean, all cell phones were down. So 98% of the power of residents in the city of Cedar Rapids, which is um, about 140,000 in the metro area. So not a huge city, but big enough, but 98% of people were without power. So, I mean, cell phones weren't working. I mean, basically everything was down. So um, first thing located in my son, 
who's he's an adult, but mm -hmm. lo located him, made sure he was okay, um, and then helped other. I mean, I spent that whole first day just helping people literally get out of their driveway. Wow. wow. Uh, and I'm just kind of imagining because I assume you were just kind of wielding this chainsaw up and down your <laughs> lot or whatever. And just, I, I mean, I'm sure you got into like a nice, like, uh, you know, rolled up your sleeves and just came this new, like, you know, uh, like uh, lumberjack. I'm yeah, I'm thinking like, like I'm thinking of uh, the uh, like uh, army of the dead or something kind of like you know, superhero on the block situation, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, and and helped I don't know half a dozen people or so, um, just to clear stuff, just so literally so you get wow. out of your driveway. As you can see, the pictures that I have for my background right. um, are. So this street. is this is an actual photo from. The, the yeah, day. this is. Okay. A, yeah, actual photo from Cedar Rapids. Wow. Um, and there were streets that just were, you drive down the street and every single hundred year old tree is just down, just like wow. the ones in the background. So it was, yeah, I mean, it almost every structure within the, so Cedar Rapids encompasses about 75 square miles. Mm -hmm. Every single structure had some kind of damage. And wow. 60 the estimate was 60 percent of the tree canopy was gone i mean this literally was a hurricane that hit the middle of iowa with essentially no warning and no you know our buildings aren't built to withstand that and the trees aren't we don't have palm trees that can handle it right. so all of these hundred plus year old trees were just uprooted and down and there were in the first six weeks there were fifty three thousand truckloads of debris that were hauled away and that that was the first pass to get the streets cleared uh and that was only 37 percent of was the estimates so i mean it like unimaginable wow wow so all this while i mean you're already taking care of your community which i think is wonderful and doing what you can there uh, let's talk about without power like <laughs> what was happening with you and your company it, like a crypto company right yeah so um so I have a generator. Uh, my my house itself was without power for six days. Oh man! I was actually able to get um, get the generator power back up. I have fiber. I kind of live in the middle of nowhere, but I have fiber to my house. Um, and so, luckily, when I got when I fired my generator up and had the house back with power, then I had internet, and essentially could start running the business again. And we're, we're spread out. Um, employees are all over the world. So there's actually only two other employees that are in the local area. Um, and they both were without power, but everyone else um, is still able to, to run. And we, so coming from a disaster recovery background, we would, even before the pandemic, we would one week a year would pick up and go work from home. We'd say, okay, office is gone. How do we work? Right. And we would do that once a week every year. So we were very well prepared mm -hmm. for that kind of a disaster. And then having already been working from home because of the pandemic, um, basically no one and our clients are all over the world. So from a company standpoint, we really didn't miss a beat. Um, other than the fact, I mean, I spent a, about a solid week and a half just helping out in the community and helping other businesses because I mean lots of other businesses weren't weren't as mobile or as prepared right. Right. as as we were right well that's very fortuitous and uh, I think it's uh, impressive that you had built your home in such a agile way uh, like having fiber having a more direct connection uh, uh, being a little bit more uh, yeah just uh, able to literally weather the storm in a sense <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and and then and at the same time you know knowing instead of spending that energy okay i'm just going to focus on me to focus on other people in the area who weren't so lucky but uh, i'd like to talk about what were some of those things especially as someone who comes from a background of disaster relief uh what are some common things that people seem to not prepare for uh, even though something like a derecho is so rare uh but you know, natural disasters do happen quite more often than we realize, uh, but we're never fully prepared. So I'd like for you to talk about whether it's for your home or for your company, some of the things that people should keep in mind, uh, not just insurance, but like as things to have nearby, things to have as a contingency, right? Right, so I, I mean, one of the things is making sure that like, like, so one of the main things that other companies that I 
helped through this time period to do basically just to maintain being able to run payroll mm -hmm. because we, you can imagine that it, I mean, it wasn't like people could just go work from home. I mean, I was lucky in the fact that I had prepared for it and had internet connectivity and could work from home. But imagine, you know, businesses without power, businesses damaged, homes damaged. I mean, many cases were, you know, in almost every case, not only was the business damaged, but all the employees' homes were damaged and no power. So people had to go to other cities and be able to run payroll and pay bills, that, that probably was the number one thing of being able to make payroll because you want to be able to make sure your employees still have money um, and then pay bills. Um, so those are the you know things that I would, again, I would just encourage people to make sure in a business that you have a plan to be able to connect to your systems if everything is gone. And how do you, how do, you do that? Right. I think that's great advice. And uh, as someone who, you know, works in the crypto space, right, like, uh, so much of what appeals a lot of people to crypto is uh, that like, if you, it weathers a lot of different things, there's something uh, nearly like amorphous or um, anarchical or, or destructured about the structure of it all. If that's one way it to put it. And uh, do you think this is, uh, I mean, given that a lot of people who do work in crypto also tend to work remotely and tend to be uh, spread out throughout the world, um, is, I guess, the kind of business you're in, um, I guess, uniquely uh, situated to be as adaptive to it, circumstances like this? For sure. I mean, I, yeah. I think that just because of that sort of natural desire to, to have that peer-to-peer -peer kind of connectivity throughout everything that mm -hmm. that I do personally and then also in my company mm -hmm. um, where you're not dependent on one single point of failure that's I think that's really the big thing that that's just kind of ingrained in my DNA and in my company that made it much easier to to weather through this derecho that was completely I, that's the other thing is, is there was no there really was no warning to this. And so it wasn't like we had weeks to prepare or even, you know, typically when there's a hurricane, you've got time to prepare. Um, we had no, no pre-warning, no time to prepare. And that's what I think is, is cool, cool slash sad about the situation that just happened to work out well for me, but did not go well for most businesses because of that tendency to have have to have a location have single points of failure through lots of different parts of their companies yeah. wow uh well that's really uh fascinating to know and, and i think there are many many lessons to extract from all this that you seem to uh you know really would love to share but we are actually out of time you can believe <laughs> it uh so uh, i want to give you an opportunity greg to share a shameless plug of sorts you can talk a little bit more about your company you can talk about some of the other work or any major causes that you have going on in your life right now the floor is yours all right so crypto stopper is the the company and we're we're a ransomware after the fact stopping solution. So once ransomware is actually running on the network and chewing up files, that's where we come in. So 77% of companies that are hit by ransomware had up-to-date antivirus. And that's exactly why we created CryptoStopper to be that after the fact. So rather than having an entire network devastated by ransomware, we stop it with only a few files hit as opposed to everything being encrypted. Got it, got it. Well, that's a yeah. great service. Uh, and Greg, thank you so much. That concludes our educative session. I really do appreciate you for participating in this and I appreciate everybody for listening or watching this session as well. You can check out more of our content on YouTube or on our Podbean channel or on all major podcasting apps. And of course, if you want to little, learn a little bit more about Educative, you can check us out at educative.io. So for all of us here at Educative, thank you so much and happy learning. Bye-bye now. Thanks for having me, Lee.
Hope you enjoyed that. This episode is available on YouTube and also on many podcast platforms. If you'd like to be part of Educative Sessions, the form is open now to apply. You can also email me at lee at educative.io. Lastly, don't forget to like and comment this video and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning.